Hey guys, in this video I want to show you how you can build a very simple sketchbook spread and because I am leading a travel sketching workshop in Spain in April 2024 I thought I would just pick some awesome Gaudi elements to build this sketchbook spread with. So I am going to be working from photo reference um, during this series of episodes of how to build a sketchbook spread and um, we're just going to, each episode, we're just going to do one element by one element and see what we end up with. It's not going to be super composed and structured from the very beginning because, you know, if we were walking around a city and we were just finding things as we go, we would just be adding those to our sketchbook spread as we go. So this is kind of a similar thing, but instead we're just going to take it photo by photo, put it on the page where we think it would look cool, and build quite an organic sketchbook spread in that way. So um, it's going to be really fun. I'm working in a Hanemula Nostalgie sketchbook. We're going to go across the double page. It's an A4 size. So we're going to be able to fit some nice elements on there. I have pre-selected some photos. Each episode I will share that photo reference with you so you can follow along. You do not need to do it exactly how I'm doing it. I'm just going to show you um, some ideas that I had at the time whilst I'm doing this. It's not massively thought out in advance. I'm just going with the flow. Pretty much how I would do if I was walking around a city on location. Just kind of go with whatever I feel like at the time. So that's how that's this is going to go. I hope you're going to enjoy this short series of episodes of Sketching Gaudi and building a sketchbook spread. If you want to find out more about my uh, sketching workshop travel vacation in Spain, you can do so. The link is below. There are still a few spaces left um, and I'd really love it if you could join us um, to learn how to sketch in the wonderful city of Barcelona. Not only Barcelona, but we're going to the Costa Brava as well. We get a private tour of Dali's house. We get to see some other really beautiful things. So check out that itinerary and if you can join us, then that would be awesome. Okay, so let's get started with the first episode of sketching Gaudi and making a sketchbook spread. This is totally beginner friendly as well. We're gonna make it as simple as possible. So if you're a beginner to ink and watercolor sketching, then this is gonna be perfect for you. Okay, so as mentioned, this is my Hanemüller Nostalgie sketchbook, A4 size. We're going to sketch across both pages, so I guess in essence it's an A3 size of area that we're using. I have just grabbed a normal HB kind of pencil here. I just kind of want to get the shape of the top of this mosaic wall in. Um, that's all I'm kind of interested in really. The rest of it is open to interpretation to draw um, with and you can draw that directly in ink, you know. Don't agonize over getting this exactly as in the photograph with all the mosaic pieces being exactly right. You're just going to drive yourself crazy. And you know, when you're out and about travel sketching, you're in an exciting city like Barcelona, then you know, you don't want to spend an hour trying to copy mosaic pieces on a bit of wall. That's just, you know. Um, not a good use of your time. Uh, so, you know, getting into the habit of not being quite so literal and actually um, interpreting what you're seeing in a fun and quick way is a really good skill to develop. So here I'm just using a 0.2 fine liner. This one happens to be made by a brand called Unipin, um, but you know, any of the fine liners uh, that you see you know, on sale are fine. As long as they say waterproof ink on the side, then you're good to go. So any of them are good. I like the 0 0.2 because I do find 0 0.1, uh, especially on this size of page, is just a little too fine for me. It's a little too scratchy um, for my particular liking. I quite like the 0 0.2 as you still get like a nice strong line with it. So that's probably my go-to size for an initial drawing. And then, you know, I'll carry around like a 0.5, um, possibly a 0.8 just to make some thicker lines. Um, but yeah, I think 0.2 is a good, good size to draw with generally. So I'm just roughly putting in the kind of tiles on the top. And I'm, you'll see I'm drawing them individually. I didn't want to draw that whole line uh, in and just copy where the pencil is because then you kind of don't get the texture of these tiles um, 
being standing a little more proud than the grout that's under, you know, in between them. And just tiny little details like that can make your sketch look so much more interesting um, because suddenly you've just got a bit of volume and a bit of depth uh, in there rather than just drawing a flat line as I did with the pencil. And I only did that with the pencil just so I could get a rough shape um, of the wall in. Is it perfect? No. Does it need to be? No. I just want to get the idea of this beautiful section of wall down on my page nice and quickly without too much fuss. And then just drawing a line that hugs those tiles just leaves a bit of gap again just to show a bit of the you know grout that's kind of underneath it and separating it from the rest of the wall. And then also there's kind of this sort of break in the wall here. There's kind of a bit of a horizontal line. I'm not drawing it um, really thick and straight. I'm deliberately putting a few kinks in it just to show a bit of texture. And it's just, yeah, makes a nice dividing line there. And now I'm just gonna go around and draw in some of these mosaic tiles. I'm just gonna try and make them different shapes and sizes and try and make them look as organic or loose as possible. I don't want to keep drawing like the same size square tile because that's going to take away from the kind of hecticness of the actual wall that we're looking at. Yeah, it's kind of trying to get that balance really um, to try and show the wall, <laughs> but not drive yourself crazy and try and draw every tile like exactly how it is in the picture or if you were sitting in front of it in real life. Um, that way. And you know, you're not going to get it bang on. So um, in my view, it's like, I'm not going to bother, you know, stressing myself out. I'm just going to draw an interpretation of the wall. Um, and as long as some things are in the right places, i.e. the colors, which we'll get to in a minute, then, you know, it's going to be a nice interpretation of this wall. So I'm just going to speed this bit up um, just so you don't have to watch me draw every single tile. And then we'll move on to the next bit. So I've decided to draw the tiles below the horizontal break. I've decided just to draw a few of them and kind of stop them in random places because I think it just makes it look a bit more interesting. So it's up to you what you decide to do with your, your sketch, um, but I quite like the way that some of them come to the bottom of the page, some of them stop a bit higher up. I just think it's quite cool, quite like interesting to look at. I've just used my kneadable eraser quickly there just to knock out any obvious pencil marks that were there and now I'm going to move on to adding some watercolour. So these paints are my generally my White Knights uh, watercolours still. A lot of them are getting to the end of the pan. I have refilled quite a few of them multiple times, but the exciting thing is I've actually just bought some new paints, which hopefully will arrive in February when my parents come over from the UK. Um, so I'm deciding to try out a new brand, which you know, I've been using White Knights since 2020, so um, big deal. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to try out um, a new brand and see how that goes. So, and then I've got my, just my collapsible water pot here. I've got two brushes, a number 10 round brush, and uh, on the right there, the Rosemary and Dagger quarter inch brush, which is one of my favorites for smaller and more detailed things. Generally, these two brushes are all I would need um, they're all I carry around with me generally. You know, if you want to see more about that, then I've got a video where I talk about different watercolor brushes, but generally these two are the ones I carry around with me. Sometimes I'll carry around a half inch flat brush as well, because I do find those come in very useful, especially if you're painting like a horizon line, if you're looking out to the ocean or something like that, having a, a square or flat brush is super useful. So um, that's another one that I, I would uh, carry around with me. So here I am using like kind of a mixture of English red, which is like a reddish brown color and Indian gold, which I guess is kind of like a quinadricone gold, just to make this really warm, nice kind of terracotta -y color. Also, the color isn't uh, all the same in the photograph. Some of the tiles are slightly darker, some of them are slightly lighter. So, um, you know, try and get that down onto your sketch, because again, that will just make it look more dynamic rather than everything being the same color. At the moment, I'm painting them the same color, but then I'm just gonna dab in a little bit of a darker brown, maybe a sepia or something, just to make a couple of them darker. 
And I am trying to adjust the color mix that I've got on my palette there. And now and again, as well, it just it just makes things look more interesting if um, not everything is exactly the same color. So there we go. I'm just adding a little bit of a darker brown over on the left. And you see how much more interesting that makes it. I could have gone further with that, but I decided to, to leave it at just those uh, two tiles if, for this particular instance. But again, you don't have to do exactly what I'm doing. You can do whatever you want and go your own way with it. I'm just showing you one way, which is nice and quick and easy. Now I wanted to paint the yellow um, strip of tiles in the middle and I realized I don't actually have uh, a nice yellow for that in my, in my main set. So this other set is a nice little portable set. This particular one is made by Nomadic Artist, but Art Toolkit uh, do, do uh, sell them. I, I believe they are the original uh, company that uh, designed them. Um, there are sort of a lot of different ones on the market now, um, but very nice, just a very, very portable way of carrying around your paints. So in this particular set, I've got a few, um, mainly Daniel Smith colors, I think. So I knew there was like a nice warm yellow that I could use just straight out of the pan for this that would work really nicely. And I do, I do tend to carry these two sets around together because I've got a nice pouch um, that I carry my art stuff around with me. And the, as you can see, the smaller palette is just so small. It's basically the size of a business card holder. It probably actually is a business card holder. Um, so it's just no extra effort just to carry it around. And it's got a slight, well, it's got a completely different range of colors in it, basically. So my, <laughs> yeah, my, my watercolor selections are a bit haphazard at the moment, but I'm hoping to like streamline when I get these new paints uh, in February. Uh, I'm deliberately not telling you what they are because I'll just keep it as a surprise. I'll do a bit of an unveiling when I get them and we can see uh, what they like. But I th I've heard a few people say that they're good. I don't actually know how long they've been around for, but I've only recently started hearing more and more about them. So um, let's try them out and uh, see what happens. I think, I think I've selected some normal colors and then a few off the wall kind of colors like lavender and mint, but <laughs> um, we'll see We'll see what happens. So now I'm using a quinad qu quinadricone, I can never bloody say this word, quinadricone rose, uh, also Daniel Smith color. It's like this beautiful magenta-y pinky color uh, over on the left. And I really love this section of wall, how it's, it's kind of like these three almost primary colors where you've got like the magenta and then the yellow strip in the middle and then this nice kind of deep blue um, or dark blue uh, section over on the right. So it's, it's just really, really beautiful. So for the blue, I am using indigo as my base, but I just wanted to make it slightly brighter. So I am using a color that's called bright blue in this set, which I essentially think is some kind of phthalo blue, to be honest with you, um, because the indigo, um, yeah, I just wanted to make it like a little, little bit brighter, a little bit more interesting, a uh, little bit less dull. So that's the mixture that I'm using for the right hand side. You can also, you know, do a little swatch out of your colors and see which ones you prefer. Don't be afraid to mix a few of them together to get the shade that you want. And again, I'm not painting really deliberately inside the lines. I'm being quite quick and quite loose. Really don't mind if the paint doesn't fill the whole shape or if it goes out of the shape. It just kind of adds to um, the kind of, you know, slightly looser feel um, that you can get when you're doing ink and watercolor sketching. So I do apologize, I think I'm slightly out of focus here, which um, is always annoying when you've <laughs> filmed a demo like this, but uh, luckily I think we can see what's going on, so it's all good. But basically I've grabbed a my pen again, and I'm just adding in a few details on the tiles, like some of the black uh, diamond or triangle shapes on some of the tiles. I'm not gonna go mad, I'm not gonna go add all the details to all the tiles, that would just take far too long. But if you can just add a few details to one, um, one or two of the tiles, maybe in each of the sections, or maybe just in the pink and yellow sections, um, that's gonna, the human eye will fill in the rest, basically. So it just gives enough indication for it to be, to hold our interest, but you don't need to go wild and draw everything. And that is a really important thing to learn when you're travel sketching or urban sketching. 
it would take uh, so long to be able to render everything in exact detail. And that's just not the nature of the word sketching, really. It's, uh, it means kind of creating a quick impression of something. So, you know, whilst this obviously isn't the loosest sketch in the world, it's still just it, a relatively quick impression. Um, I think this whole thing maybe took me like 15 minutes, but I did have to wait a little, a few minutes just for the watercolor to dry before I drew on top, which I'm really bad at, by the way, I have no patience. And then I'll draw on top and my ink goes everywhere. So just um, be careful of that. Uh, I did have this pink pen to hand, which I thought would be really nice just to add some of those pinker details on the yellow. Um, not necessarily a pen I would have in my urban sketching kit, to be honest with you, but I'm here at home and I had it in the pot. So I thought I'd just use it. But you could use a paint marker if that's something you carry around or a color pencil um, or even your uh, watercolor if you, you know, if you've got a nice pointy, small pointy brush and you can get those details in. So that is pretty much it, guys. That is the first part of our Gaudi sketchbook spread. Um, <laughs> sorry, this little bit is out of focus. It's really annoying. So this was the first episode. I hope you'll join me for the next episode. We'll get progressively more difficult as we go along, but this is a really nice little one to start off with. Who knows how this sketchbook spread is going to end up. I really haven't planned this in any way. I'm just gonna roll with it. So I hope you enjoyed it. Do check out the um, Sketching Spain trip with me in April. I do still have a few spaces left and I would really love for you to join us. So check out the itinerary. If you've got any questions, you can always email me, taria at urbansketchingworld.com. And I will see you in the next video for episode two of our Gaudi sketchbook spread.